Hey everybody, it's Brandon, The Weekend Cruiser, where I try to go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend, and every now and again, I get to do longer sailings. So I just got off a 12-night sailing on the Celebrity Infinity here in South America. So I sailed to the end of the world, um, and I wanted to tell you about the nine different ports that we went to. If you are looking at going on a South American cruise, you're probably also going to be hitting many of these ports. My particular cruise went from... Uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, came down around Cape Horn and then came back up to Santiago, Chile, where they let us off at. And I am including Santiago and um, Buenos Aires in the port count here um, that we'll talk about some of the things that I did and what made these experiences really nice and what you need to be thinking of if you're also going to be going to several of these ports. So the first place we stopped at or where we flew into was Buenos Aires, Argentina. And so here you are not going to be able to replicate what all I did except for one of the experiences because we were there for the World Cup where Argentina took home the World Cup and it was such a fantastic time. So I flew in on Saturday. The World Cup celebration was on Sunday where we were able to go and watch with everybody, get in the crowds, head over to the obelisk. Um, and then on Tuesday, we had the parade with all the actual players from the Argentinian team that came in. And again, it was just people everywhere. It was such a good time, such a memorable experience. And probably one of my biggest highlights from this cruise is being in Argentina when they won the World Cup in 2022. I mean, such an amazing experience. So I don't really have much that I can tell you about what we did in Buenos Aires that you're gonna be able to replicate because everything was closed. Everybody was focused in on this World Cup and there was really nothing else to do. All the restaurants were closed. The bars were still open so that you could go and watch. Even our hotel sent us all notes saying like, hey, look at our staff is gonna be watching the game. <laughs> we're not gonna be able to help you during this time. Um, so it's a really neat thing to be able to celebrate with them. But on Monday, the one day that we did have free, we did schedule a gaucho and ranch tour in San Antonio de Areca, um, which was actually a really, really good time. And so we went through Get Your Guide, which is definitely one that I hands down recommend to all of you. And I'm gonna link below to Get Your Guide and to this specific, specific link because it was a really, really good time. But with this ranch tour and gaucho experience, you know, you go out into um, San Antonio de Areca, which is kind of the countryside of Argentina, if you will, countryside of Buenos Aires. And we got to actually ride on a horse. And we're not talking like a five minute ride around the light post kind of tour. We, we've all done those. But this was like a 30 minute solid horseback riding experience. They didn't go fast. They're extremely well trained. Um, so I saw a lot of people doing it that I didn't think good, but we all figured it out. Um, we then had a amazing lunch. They, it was like a um, Brazilian steakhouse almost. They kept bringing around meats, different kinds of meats. I think I tried six different meats at this experience. They had wine to drink with it. And then they had some singers and dancers get up and do some of their folklore. And we saw some, I'll call it a strange horse demonstration presentation where one of the gauchos, which is a cowboy for Argentina, showed us how close of a relationship he had with his horse, um, which was just a bit awkward and a little bit sensual, um, but the experience overall was a really, really fantastic time, and I highly recommend the uh, Buenos Aires tour, Gaucho, and Ranch tour in San Antonio de Areca. So our first port of call was Montevideo, Uruguay, and this was a place that has about 1.3 million people to it, and we signed up to the Montevideo Highlights Tour, and honestly, this tour wasn't anything to really write home about. The tour guide tried his best. He took us to several locations. So we went to the Antigas statue, I think is how it's pronounced. Artigas statue in the middle of the city. I think he was the founding father um, of Uruguay. I'm not a historian, so forgive me if I get these wrong. We went over to a market, which was really touristy, and we saw a statue of the early settlers, and we saw where the initial World Cup was played in the World Cup stadium that they have there from the very first World Cup ever, um, which was neat to see, but we could only see it from the outside, and it wasn't really anything terribly impressive other than it was the first one. This was a very popular tour. There's probably four or five different buses that were doing this, um, but if you want to sit on a bus and kind of ride around a lot, this is a great way to be able to see Montevideo. But, you know, we didn't really find it that terribly exciting and kind of wish that we would have chosen a different one. Our second port of call was Punta del Este, Uruguay. 
and this is a town of about 500,000 people in the summer and only about 13,000 year round. That population number did go up with COVID. More people have moved there full time, but it is a smaller town. It is a vacation town. But even though those numbers are smaller, we felt like it had a lot more to offer than Montevideo did. Now we did the Raleigh, rally, uh, I'll spell it out for everybody, um, Raleigh tour and Casa Pueblo tour, which was really interesting. We enjoyed this tour. So the Raleigh Museum was actually really nice. The artwork that they had in there was contemporary. They had a lot of statues. They had a lot of different pieces. And it was much larger than I was anticipating for kind of a vacation town museum. It was a really nice place. If you get the chance to go there, please do. Casa Pueblo is an architectural kind of masterpiece, if you will. It is now a hotel, um, but you do get to walk through the common spaces. They have a little museum there. They have some artwork from this person um, from Casa Pueblo. Um, but it is a really, really neat kind of hangout spot. It's also a quick place to just grab a coffee if you want uh, while you're waiting for your tour. It doesn't take long. The views are very good. Um, I would definitely recommend Raleigh. The Casa Pueblo, if you like architecture, I think is a really neat spot. It doesn't take long, but if there's a Raleigh tour and something else, you might want to just look at that to see, you know, what's going to really suit your fancy. Ponta del Este is also going to have the nicest beach. So if you're looking to walk off of the cruise ship and go to a beach and just have a relaxing day, this is going to be your port. As I mentioned at the start, it is a summer town. So if you are here in the summertime, you're more than welcome to join all the locals on the beach for this. Keep in mind that water down by Antarctica starts getting pretty cold. Our third port of call was Puerto Margen, Argentina. And so as you go further south in Argentina, or if you're coming from the other direction, coming further south in Chile, you will see more of your tourists start to focus in on nature and wildlife. And what you're really gonna wanna seek out to do here is see all the wildlife you can, see the animals, you're gonna wanna go exploring. And so that's exactly what we did here in Puerto Madryn. We did the Peninsula of Valdez and Wildlife Tour. Any tour that you do here, the downside to it though, is gonna be a bus ride. Ours was about two and a half hours one way to the end of Porto, or to uh, Peninsula Valdez. But when we got there, we had like four different stops over a different hour. A box lunch was luckily provided. It was a really good box lunch, by the way. Uh, but we were able to get up close and personal with the penguins. We were able to see elephant seals and really just take in all the nature and wildlife, tons of birds that were out there and all sorts of animals. So I would highly recommend this tour. It is again, a lot of bus ride. That's the only downside to it, but you really get up close and personal with all the animals that are there. Our next stop was then all the way down to Cape Horn, Chile, which is the southernmost point of South America. Now we did not actually stop in Cape Horn. However, the captain was very, very good on this sailing and was able to navigate around the Cape Horn. So we got to see the full island. It's got a lighthouse on it. It is absolutely beautiful, but it is considered the end of the world. And it is absolutely something you do not want to miss from the ship. It is more of a cruising port, if you will, or a sightseeing kind of activity on the actual ship itself. But it is a amazing experience. Keep in mind, when you are this far south, number one, it's gonna be really cold. So I was bundled up and still freezing. It's gonna be extremely windy and it's also gonna be very, very rocky in this end of the world. The weather here can be very unpredictable. So please make sure you are coming prepared. I did not bring heavy enough clothes or heavy enough jackets. Um, so make sure that you're doing that so that when you get to Cape Horn where you can see it, you can go out to the front of the ship. So we went all the way up to decks 11 and 12 at the very forward section of the ship. Ship, and this is where we took a lot of amazing pictures of Cape Horn. So it was extremely windy up there, uh, but it was a good time. It was also very cold, but it's got the shield that you can stand behind um, front to protect you from the wind. If you want a less windy option, I would recommend going down to the 10th floor of the solarium um, or going into uh, the pool area that's gonna have the sliding windows that you can stand behind for a little bit of protection. Our fourth port of call was Ushuaia, Argentina. And this was probably my favorite port that we stopped in. And honestly, it reminded me a lot of a little Alaskan town. So if you've taken a cruise over to Alaska, you may have a little bit of deja vu as you come to Ushuaia, which is considered the gateway to Antarctica. And so what we did here was a catamaran ride directly from the port. So we didn't have to walk far at all, but we were able to get on a catamaran. And then we went out and again, looked at wildlife. So we were able to see um, sea lions, penguins, 
uh, in two different locations. Lots of amazing birds as well that we were able to pick up. There was um, a condor that was actually by one of the lighthouses that we got really close to. Um, so it's just neat to be able to experience that and see that. But here, the key, it's gonna be chilly once again. Uh, the weather is unpredictable in this part of the world. Luckily, the catamaran did have indoor spaces for us. We were not sitting out like you might think of a catamaran in the Caribbean, where you're sitting on the netting, getting some sun. You're still gonna to wanna to bring your jackets to stay warm. The inside area was also on the cooler side. The heating system didn't work too well. It's better than standing outside, um, but it did its job. It kept us warm enough to make sure that we were comfortable. Getting back into Ushuaia when we came back, this was probably about a four hour tour. So it was on the shorter side. It dropped us off in time for lunch. And so when it dropped us off, we just walked right into town because you're already right in the heart of everything. Um, and we went to an amazing steakhouse called Agostino. And it's actually the very first restaurant we got to, which is kind of why we chose it because we were starving, we were hungry. And so we said, let's just do it. It looks nice. We went in there. Um, there wasn't many people who got there, but when we left, it was absolutely packed. The steaks that we had, we had two of them, and I'll post a picture of it, um, were incredible. I could not eat even 25% of probably what they served me, but I felt horrible for it because it was so good. Um, it was absolutely the best steak that we'd had on this entire trip. So if you get a chance to go to Agostino in Ushuaia, I highly recommend it. They've also got a little bit of shopping. I would say this port probably has the best shopping for all the places you can go if you're looking for touristy items or even maybe some winter clothing. This is gonna be the best place to be able to find um, some of those things for what you're looking for. Also some really neat um, photo opportunities from, they have a, a walking area along the water that you can get pictures of the ship. And it's really neat just to see some of the other expedition cruises that leave from Ushuaia and go to Antarctica. So a lot of people are actually going to Ushuaia to join their ship and head down south to Antarctica. And these ships look much different than what we're accustomed to on our Caribbean sailing. The next thing that we encountered was the Beagle Channel. And this again is somewhere that, you know, the ship does not stop. It is in the channel, it's sailing away, but you're gonna see about four or five different glaciers while you're cruising and the ship gets extremely close to it. Again, kind of reminded me of Alaska, but I think the glaciers here rivaled the size of the ones in Alaska. They were absolutely gorgeous to be able to look up at the glacier, see the blue color coming through. Um, it was really, really nice. For my sailing, we were going again from Buenos Aires over to Santiago. So make sure that you are on the port side or the right-hand side of the ship so that you can see all these. If you're going from Santiago, you're gonna reverse that and be on the left-hand side of the ship. Um, or excuse me, we were on the starboard side on the way down. You'll make sure if you're coming from Santiago, you're on the left or the port side. Port has four letters, left has four letters. That's how you remember that if you think quick enough. Luckily, you're not gonna miss this. So the ship may get to uh, the glaciers at different times, but in our case, the cruise director actually came onto um, the PA system, the public announcement system, and told us that the glaciers were upcoming to get where we could see them, what side of the ship that it was gonna be on. And then he told us about some of these glaciers. So it was really nice that he was providing educational content to us while we were passing all these glaciers so that we could learn more. Our last port of call was Punto Arenas, Chile. And unfortunately, this port was canceled for us. So one thing that you have to learn and appreciate when you come on a South American cruise is that the weather is unpredictable. We had a lot of wind and the port itself actually closed down and said, we're not taking any ships. So even if the captain could maneuver in, the port was closed and we were not able to go in there. This gave us an extra sea day. So this was five sea days in a row, more than I've ever had before going back to Santiago. So I can't really advise on what to do here because I didn't get a chance to do it, but I can advise on when you go to this area, make sure that you understand that ports can be canceled. You wanna make sure that you've got backup plans and solid things to do on the ships is you may have more days there than you traditionally would. And then we finally returned back to Santiago, Chile. And now we stayed a few more days in Santiago. You can see my hotel room. I'm still here in Santiago, actually flying out tonight. Um, but we did one of the tours from the cruise ship to the airport. And so it was a basic city highlights style tour. Um, and unfortunately, this is a lesson you learn when you travel. We came to Santiago on January 2nd, which is the Monday after the holiday on the 1st everything was closed. Somebody even asked um, where they could buy a souvenir or you know, kind of a shop and they were like, 
You're gonna have to go to the airport for that. There's nothing that's gonna be open, and it was a very quiet town. We still got a really good tour guide, though. I mean, she was, a tour guide can make or break your tour, let's be honest, but she was fantastic. Her name was Zara, um, and I forget, the, and she was with Acorn Destination Management, so shout out to her. Um, but she was really, really good, shared a lot of great information, and she modified our itinerary because, you know, a lot of things were closed, so we were moving a lot quicker. Traffic when we started out was also very slow, but then in the afternoon, it also significantly picked up as everybody was coming back from the beach and the coast back into Santiago. So it slowed us down a little bit more. We had um, a lunch break on this trip, which was probably our worst lunch break. I would have preferred a box lunch because the steak they served is just was, it, they brought us all one size fits all steaks. And that's just never a great idea when they're all well done like that. Um, so not the best lunch there, but our tour guide pointed out a ton of stuff to us. We got out and took some photo opportunities. We got to see the winery um, or the wine region, I should say. We didn't do a wine tour because you all know that I do not drink, but if you are in Santiago and looking to do a tour, you are going to find plenty, a plethora of wine tours that you can do. And that probably is going to have a little bit different of a feel than the highlights tour that we did. All right, everybody, I hope this is helpful if you are looking at coming down to South America. It is a place that I've wanted to come to for a while, but I never thought I'd truly make it to the end of the world. Hope this video is helpful on finding what you want to do to really have an enjoyable South American cruise. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a weekend cruise or longer sailing soon.